Good morning. It is almost time for me to leave for the office. I'm going into the office today. I usually go in on Mondays and Thursdays, but just to kind of, you know, collect the mail. And I think we've got uh, some, a courier coming today, whatever, stuff like that. <laughs> There's only two of us left in the office. So I think we just go in to get some FaceTime with each other. But uh, yeah, it's uh, the office is pretty empty now, so it's just like it doesn't make much sense to slip all the way in when we can work from the comfort of our own home, and uh, it gives you actually more personal time. I don't have to start getting ready for work until you know, like <laughs> ten minutes before I have to walk down the hallway. So I have more time in the morning to write. I have more time just to kind of have my own like time and lunch hours if I take one, which half the time I don't anyway, but you know, I can go downstairs and I can do some yoga at lunch or I can just relax and knit and hang out with the dog. Just walking around me, <laughs> may need out. Uh, and then at five o'clock, you shut down and you're home. There's no commute time. There's no sitting in traffic, anything like that. So I love that aspect of it. It is a little lonely. I'm used to having a pretty active office. I mean, there's only 12 of us in there. At the time, it was still the old company and we were all really good friends and we still are now, but it's, you know, you. I think you went in for the camaraderie and, uh, and you enjoyed the time with the people. So uh, it's kind of that part of it sad, but do you think she wants out? I know you were just out before that other guy left. <laughs> All right. So I'll take a banana. I'll take one of my real good bars. These are like, oops, going up from the sun. Those are like my go-tos. It's kind of a, it's a snack, but it's a, as far as things like that go, a healthy snack. So I will put that with my keys so I can forget. I will feel, I know, I'm coming. I'm so impatient. <laughs> So I'm at the office. <laughs> it is very sunny out. I am so far the only one here. I don't know if my coworker is coming in today or not. So I thought I would show you, for anybody who has not seen, my second leftover city call cowl because I had mentioned, actually I had mentioned, if you want to learn how to do color work, you can uh, start with that. It's a really good place to learn. And then the other thing I did was 
once I kind of got the hang of it, this is the sweater I did, which I called it the birch. I was like, I'm almost positive it's called the birch. It's not birch. It's not, it's blizzard uh, by Jessica McDonald. So this is a really simple one to use to kind of learn how to uh, do a colorwork yoke sweater. So simple, so simple. And this is what I learned on. So this is the leftover city cowl and I'll try to remember to put in on the screen here the name of the uh, designer but um, you just start off kind of like it with a small like rib with a solid color and then you go like one on one and then you go solid and then one on one so it gives you a chance to get used to switching back and forth with the two colors and how you hold them in your hand. It's a perfect way to learn. And you just kind of repeat this like up. You make it as long as you want. I forget how many repeats she has you do, but um, I love it. It's an excellent stash, like a uh, stash buster for leftover yarn bits. And uh, it comes out looking so pretty. I love it. So it's a really fun way to play with color. It's a great way to learn how to do the one on, or to do color work if you're just learning and get comfortable with it. So I'm definitely gonna make some more of these. I think I'll probably do some for gifts for Christmas next year and uh, make myself another one as well. I already have another one as, that I did first. This was my second one, um, but I would like to have another one. It's just such a great way to use up uh, little leftover sock bits. Good afternoon. So I'm just at the tail end of my lunch hour and I went to, I had to run a quick errand. So I went to the lint store just down the street and actually stocked up, got one of those big bags, but I didn't get one of the pre-made. Sometimes you can get the pre-made ones. I went and I selected like all of my favorite lint balls. So it's got like a lot of sea salt and sea salt caramel and matcha and pistachio. <laughs> and then they had some new flavors. There was like snickerdoodle. So I got some of that. And then they got some regular sort of uh, the dark chocolate. Cause I know my husband likes that, but some of it is here for the office. We used to have one of our senior VPs who was one of the guys that retired in February who every Christmas would bring in one of those big bags. And it, <laughs> it would take all of us like until Christmas to eat it. He'd bring it in like around the 1st of December. Um, so now that there's just the two of us, I thought I'd split it up. So I have some that um, I'll keep like a stash here at the office and then um, I'll take some home. I may put some in gifts, I may not, because I did buy all my favorites. So. I did a little knitting on the sock last night. Look at this, oh my God, look at these colors. It looks really good in this light. Look at it, look at it. Oh, I think I am going to make these a little longer in the leg just because it's turning out to be a really fast knit because it's striped, so you just want to get to the next one, the next one, the next one, right? But the colors are so beautiful that I just, I think they're just amazing looking. They are so pretty. I kind of, <laughs> I kind of wished I'd gotten two balls of this. Or I, I at least hope that they'll make it again. If they make it again next Christmas, I may. I really like, I love the yarn, but it is expensive. It's definitely like a treat yourself because it's about 40 some dollars. I would say roughly about 45 is what the average would be. I think it depends on the base that you get. And I got the Yak base, which I think might have been a little more, a couple of dollars more expensive. And then shipping on top of that is like 20, how much was it for me? Now it's coming from the States, I believe. And I'm in Nova Scotia. So the shipping I think was like $27. So that's like, you know, 70 something bucks. Am I doing my math right? 
<laughs> Who's $75 for a skein of yarn? That being said, look at it. <laughs> it was worth every cent. So if you're, if you're able to treat yourself or somebody else says, I'd like to treat you to something you'd like, I would, I would definitely recommend checking out their yarn. If you get it in the gobstopper like this, I do think it costs a little more. And I got it in the gobstopper because I'm like totally kind of <laughs> tangled here. Just because I was, <laughs> I'd never bought yarn like this before. And I just, you know, I felt like treating myself. But I was also getting, I bought a ball of this for my mom for Christmas as well. And I got hers on the, I think I got hers on the 80-20 or 75-25 yarn and I was getting it for her and I wanted it I wanted hers to be like in the gobstopper thing because it's just it just it presents very nicely it presents very nicely but it also gives you a really good sense of what the yarn how the yarn is going to stripe up like you can really kind of see the colors playing together so I would definitely like to get another ball. I have my last Lindor. This is my matcha one. These are so good. When I saw them, I think it was last year, I was like, matcha, what's that gonna taste like? And then I tried it and I was like, oh my God. So, so I'm gonna have some. 